Um, thanks so much to Linda um, and to Lisa for inviting me to participate. I'm coming to you from the Miller Center at the University of Virginia. So I'm going to start um, a little bit talking about, uh, about the Miller Center. So the Miller Center is a research institute. Um, the Miller Center is a nonpartisan research institute that focuses on political history and public policy with a special emphasis on the U.S. presidency. We're part of the University of Virginia, um, and you can see there our building. We're kind of housed off the grounds um, in a really nice space that has free parking. Don't tell anybody that because that is the most important thing at any college or university, I'm sure you all know. So we have um, a number of different programs that might be useful to accidental government librarians, uh, and I'll kind of walk us through those through my um, presentation. The first um, one I'm going to start with is our um, American President website. So it's called the U.S. President. And this website um, is good for general users. This is not for your deep scholars that want to do scholarly research. This is for your students who come and say, I need to find some information about any given president. And this website has authoritative essays that are written or reviewed by excerpts experts and supporting materials such as speeches and public programs. So I'm going to just click on Lincoln as an example to show you. They all come up, they all have the same template where they have um, across the top members of the administration. You can see everybody in their cabinet, uh, major events, which is kind of key events by a timeline during the presidency, and then um, educational resources. If you scroll down, each president has fast fast facts on the right, and then you can see the essays um, in the middle of the page. So it covers, as you can see, campaigns and elections, domestic affairs, foreign affairs. Each essay has an expert who has written or reviewed the material, and then there's supporting material. So featured insights, these are public programs about Lincoln, about his presidency, about the Civil War, as well as speeches, these, these and photographs. And these differ, obviously, for each president a little bit. But this is a great site for students um, and for actually general interested public. Someone's like, I want to know more about Teddy Roosevelt's 1912 presidential campaign. This is a great, a great site to use. So moving on from there, uh, the Miller Center also houses um, a presidential speech archive. Now, this is not a comprehensive resource. When uh, Lisa gets to her resource, the American Presidency Project, which I think is what she's going to talk about, that is a comprehensive, like all the public papers of the presidents. This is um, kind of the highlights of presidential speeches. And um, it includes text from George Washington to Donald Trump, uh, audio from Franklin Roosevelt to Donald Trump, and video from JFK to Donald Trump. Uh, to give you, so here you can select which president you want to um, explore, and then if you click on a specific page, you can see they sort of come up um, with the video, the audio file, a description of the, um, the speech, and then the transcript. These are um, very useful for, you know, finding a famous speech um, if you want to compare speeches from presidents. So, you know, what um, uh, John Kennedy's speech at the Berlin, about the Berlin Wall, or, you know, in Berlin versus Ronald Reagan's speech in the same place, you know, 30 years later. So that sort of thing. We're working on uh, making it possible for users to bulk download materials from our website. So that when that is um, enabled, that would allow people to do kind of textual analysis of the presidential speeches. So going on from that, um, the Miller Center is also home to a presidential oral history project. And this is um, in-depth interviews from members of the administration from Jimmy Carter, uh, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, we are getting ready early, um, probably next spring, we'll launch the George W. Bush Oral History Project. And by launch, I mean we'll open it to the public. That has already been done. We have, I think, about 60 to 80 interviews for that, and th that will be open to the public. Uh, we, um, and we have just started the interviews for the Obama, for the Barack Obama Oral History Project. We also did a special project on Edward Kennedy, as you can see his name there as well. And these um, are interesting to, so if you, so I'm going to actually, uh, let's click on, um, we're going to click on Bill Clinton just to kind of show you, and then it will list all of 
the interviews for that particular president. If you click on a specific interview, you can see they come up in the website. Um, they are uh, here for users. You, you do not need to come to the Miller Center. Everything that is open for the Oral History Project is available online. And users can um, search these, obviously. They can also download them. So if you wanted to see, we offer um, PDFs of the um, oral history interviews as well as a briefing book, which is the materials that we give to the interviewee before we do the interview, so they have some sense of what we're going to talk to them about. Um, and these interviews cover specific events from a presidency, but they also get into detailed into detail on the workings of a presidential administration. So how decisions were made, how information flowed through an administration, and how an administration responded to events. Um, the, we don't have at this time a great index for these oral history interviews, and so sort of lamely, the best thing to do is kind of do a command F on any given interview. So say you want to see, you know, where the Cold Wars discussed, for example. Um, it would be to kind of go through the people in a presidency, you know, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, and kind of search that, um, the electronic transcript, to find out where that um, topic has been mentioned. And those are just a really good inside uh, first-person account of presidency, of these presidencies and kind of what, want, uh, what went on in them. The final um, project I'm going to talk to you about is um, called the Secret White House Tapes. So these are about 5,000 hours of audio from the Franklin Roosevelt, um, Eisenhower, Truman, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon presidencies. But the bulk of the audio comes from Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. The audio tapes are from the National Archives, and they are in the public domain. Um, so the Miller Center does not own those. Anybody um, can access them and listen to them. But the Miller Center is the only place transcribing and contextualizing the tapes. Uh, the tapes allow users to listen to phone conversations and meetings between the president and his advisors or visitors to the White, the White House. The tapes are um, complicated, and they are uh, great and they're complicated for a number of reasons, one of which is that each administration did it differently. So where they recorded, how they recorded, what they, how the tapes were processed by the National Archives, they're all different. And so the naming conventions are different, how they're organized is different. And so if you have a scholar who is interested, or if you yourself are interested and you really want to get more into the meat of these, of the presidential uh, secret White House tapes, I would, I would actually recommend for you to get in touch with me, um, because depending on which president you're talking about, there are kind of different strategies and different ways to approach them. But for the casual users, you can see here on my screen, we have these featured recordings. Um, and these are available on our, under our educational uh, resources. And actually, wait a minute. Before I go there, I'm going to show you when you research the tapes. Basically, you can see here, we, we just have all this all the audio, like it's just here, and we have an infinite scroll on our website, which I don't love, but that's the way it's done. And so you can just kind of go through and see. So you can see from conversation to conversation, um, different dates and, and um, different topics that are con uh, discussed. And you can also search across them. Um, so you can see if I, I just searched on civil rights, and there you can see conversations that are specifically about civil rights across different presidencies. But for the more casual user, uh, what we've done is under our educational resources, we have um, highlighted different conversations. So if I go back here, you can see here these kind of featured recordings, wherein we, um, our scholars have transcribed them, and then they put them, match them to the audio. Uh, generally, like Lyndon Johnson is actually very easy to understand, but a lot of the other recordings, it can be hard to, to understand what they're saying if you can't also see the transcript at the same time. And so we, these are under our educational resources on our website. But I'm going to just bring up one quickly and play it for you. It's kind of a short one, but it's, it's a good one. Um, this is a recording between uh, Lyndon Johnson and Senator Richard Russell, who is, a, 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 I believe, from Mississippi, um, a close kind of mentor of Johnson's. And this is a conversation that took place in March 6th 
1965 about uh, the ongoing um, war in Vietnam and kind of the upcoming escalation. So I'm going to play this for you quickly. And you can obviously hear it and see it at the same time. Uh, well, I'll have the uh, military assistance and the, uh, the uh, I don't know, deck the trouble is uh, with this finally. The great trouble I'm under. A man can fight if he's got, if he can see daylight down the road somewhere. That's but there ain't no daylight in Vietnam. There's, there's, there's not a bit. There's no end to the road. There's just nothing, nothing, nothing. The more bombs you drop, the more nations you scare, the more people you make mad, the more embassies you get we made. We're going to wind up with the people who are mad as hell with us that we're saving by being in there. It's just awful. Awesome. Australia and everybody else is going to be mad in hell. It's the biggest it's worst mess I ever saw in my life. You couldn't have inherited a worse mess. Well, if they'd say I inherited, it'd be lucky, but they'll all say I created it. <laughs> you, know, you go get well, come back, and I got a big bed for you, and I want to see you. And he got three women want to see you. Well, give all that my love. Oh, well. Bye. As you can see, these do a great job of um, kind of bringing to life history. So um, they're they're useful for scholars. They're also useful for teachers in the classroom with students as a way to kind of help history come alive. Uh, you really um, get to hear a lot about, learn a lot about the president's personality, the, how they interact with people, the way they negotiate policy compromises, for example. And so it's a, it's just a really um, unique resource that um, that people can kind of delve into on that. So um, that's it for me. I'm, I'm sort of trying to keep my time um, constrained since there are four of us to present. But if you have any questions for me, I'll go to the chat and I can answer them. Um, but also, uh, my email address is my last name, Blackford, at virginia.edu. And so if you have, I've gone through this kind of quickly. If you have any specific questions, feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the chat, and I'm happy to, to help you. Uh, thanks so much. Um, so I'm uh, Catherine Horn. I'm the Special Collections Librarian at the Washington Library at Mount Vernon. I'll just give a quick intro into what um, what we are. Our library was actually built five years ago. Um, there was previously a research center on one of the administrative buildings um, on the historic estate, um, but five years ago they decided um, to build this beautiful new facility to really be a center for the study of Washington, um, very much in the model of the presidential libraries. Even though we are not an official presidential library, um, we are a complete, um, we are our own nonprofit institution separate from the National Archives. Um, but if you go to our website, uh, mountvernon.org slash library, um, you can see there's some um, pictures of our beautiful building. Um, and then I'm just going to run through a few of the resources that we have. Um, obviously, unlike the other presenters, um, we do not have information on all of the presidents. We have a very specific focus on the first president, George Washington. Um, but what we do at our library, in addition to being a research library, we host a lot of speakers and events. Um, we have research fellows who come for anywhere from one month to six months. Uh, and we also have an education and leadership um, department that do their own programming. But what I thought would be of most use to you all, I wanted to switch over and talk about um, two different initiatives that are um, hosted by our library. The first one is the um, Papers of George Washington, which is also being um, hosted in conjunction with the University of Virginia and their Papers of George Washington editing project. Um, one of their editors works here in our library, um, and this project is uh, has been going on for um, coming up on 50 years now. They are going through and transcribing every piece of correspondence that George Washington has ever written, and they are um, both publishing them in physical volumes and then putting them on a database that will be um, accessible, text searchable for everyone to use, um, along with their um, copious notes um, and cross-references that really have opened up a whole new world of researching George Washington. Um, so if you go to our website, we have um, a description of the project. Um, there's a way to link to the paper's database. Um, which maybe I won't go into now, but um, but again, that has fully transcribed all of the correspondence of George Washington, um, and you can on the website can read a little bit more about that project. Um, and so, as part of our partnership with the Papers of George Washington, once the printed volumes are complete, the goal is for all of the paperwork related to this project um, to be housed at the Fred W. Smith Library. So once the project is complete, we will have at least a 
scanned copy of every single cor piece of correspondence George Washington has ever written, and that will be a great resource um, for us and for all of the scholars who come here uh, who want to research George Washington. Our library is also home to a digital research, uh, digital history research center, um, and there are a number of initiatives that come out of this center. Um, the most um, important one, or the, or the one that might be the most useful to you all, is the George Washington Digital Encyclopedia, and there's a link to it here. Um, in addition to the encyclopedia, you can see that there's um, there's a podcast. There are some interactive maps, um, interactive map of George Washington's world, um, which sort of uh, is a great digital history project uh, tracing everywhere that George Washington went in his life. And um, this is very helpful for uh, if you ever get very specific research questions about where was George Washington during this time period. Um, that's a great resource. Um, but going back to the uh, George Washington Digital Encyclopedia. What this is, um, is essentially a really big database full of articles on everything related to George Washington's world um, in both the colonial era and the founding, um, the founding era and the Revolutionary War. Um, so this is everything from um, you know, who were his generals, who were his secretaries, um, who were the enslaved people who worked at Mount Vernon, um, and they are all organized um, both by subject, um, subject and title. Um, kind of broken down into these different groups, such as uh, things about the American Revolution. Um, and the presidency will also have its own section. Um, and these articles, um, they have all been either written by um, somebody on our staff or a professional scholar, or they have been written by um, an undergraduate student, and then they have been edited and approved for publication by um, somebody who has a PhD in history. Um, so it's actually also been a really great um, kind of community um, outreach and kind of crowdsourced encyclopedia um, all by um, his, um, history scholars. Um, so this is a really great resource, um, great place to send people um, instead of if you're trying to encourage students to get off of Wikipedia and go to a more reputable, reputable source. Um, that was kind of um, the big impetus between the digital encyclopedia is that we could direct that um, those sorts of inquiries to our website. And then for the research library itself, um, we have a list of our databases, um, which is really a great jumping off point for all of the, the research, um, research, that, research tools that are available at our library. Um, and you can see on our database listing that these are, um, some of these are um, websites that were created by Mount Vernon. These are the ones listed as Mount Vernon Open Access. A lot of the databases are um, open access, um, so they're just um, made by off-site. Um, they're off-site resources, but they are open to the public. And then there are also a number of databases listed that are subscription only, and these are databases that we provide access to when scholars come and use the computers at our library. In terms of actual primary sources that are in our special collections, um, visual resources, and archives, um, there are three main ways to find our collections online. Um, the first is our library catalog. Um, this is where all of our general collection as well as our rare book collections um, and a number of our manuscript collections are. Um, this is our Founding Fathers Library Consortium um, in partnership with two other um, famous historical houses in this um, Northern Virginia area. Um, we have a standard library catalog. Um, this is where, again, you can search for all of our uh, rare books. Um, some of the highlights of our collection, and um, we do have 104 volumes from George Washington's original library. Um, a lot of these are books that he actually received during the presidency. Um, so there's some, some really great things that will come up when you search there. And then I'm going to turn it over to um, Becca Baird, who's going to talk a little bit about the two other ways to find our um, primary sources, which is our archive space finding aids database and the digital library. All right, um, so I'm just going to jump off of what where um, Kat left off. Um, so we are both, um, Catherine and I both work at the Washington Library. Um, before I launch into searching our collections, I do just want to talk a little bit about my collection um, that I work with and the difference between um, what is our special collections and what is our um, archives. So, um, so the archives that I work with are the archives of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. 
Um, a lot of people don't know that Mount Vernon um, is actually not owned or operated by the federal government or the state of Virginia, but they're owned by this nonprofit, um, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Um, here's some information about them on our website. Um, it is um, a unique organization because it is uh, made up of only women, and it has been since they purchased Mount Vernon in 1858. Um, but it's also significant because it was pretty much the first um, um, organization in the country that was dedicated solely to historic preservation. Um, these ladies got together to try and save um, George Washington's home. So um, what's significant for us at the Washington Library is not only do we have um, some great resources about George Washington, but we also have this great archive of information about the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, which is um, what I mostly work with. Um, but then to go back to um, the previous page, so um, to search our all of our collections, um, there's a couple of jumping off places. Um, you could go to our Special Collections and Archives page, which kind of outlines um, the differences between all of the, the three collections for primary sources that we have. Um, so you see the Special Collections here, which um, holds mainly um, Washington family papers, so any papers written to or from George Washington and Martha Washington and the rest of the Washington family um, would be in special collections. And then the archives of the MVLA um, and then the photo archives um, are, are separate from special collections. So those are the kind of our three primary source collections there. Um, so you can search our finding aids for all three of these um, big collections in our archive space. Um, we use Archive Space as our database. A lot of you might be familiar with this already. Um, so you can get to that through our website, through a um, couple of different links. Um, so this is our Archive Space page. I apologize that we don't have our branding on it yet. Um, our IT department is still working on that, but at least we're um, available on the web now. Um, so you can see our three repositories here listed. Um, so you can go, you can search, um, do a search um, for all, across all three of the repositories, um, or you can do just a search in one of the three, whichever one you're looking at. So um, I'm going to go into the archives just to give you um, a few ideas of other places um, that you can search. So um, if you're looking at the collections right now for, from some of the collections from the archives, we have about 21 finding aids um, available. Um, and one of the great things about archive space is that you can link to um, digitized material on the web, because um, we also use um, OCLC's Content DM digital asset management system to host our digitized material. So um, just to give you a quick example of how these are linked, I'm going to show you um, one collection, this publications of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Um, you can see here, um, once you click into the collection, all of the finding aid details that you would normally find in a finding aid. Um, and then over here to the right, all the different series. Um, so just to go into this series here. Um, that breaks it down even more into the folder level here. And then if you click on something specific that you want to see, um, such as this historical sketch of Ann Pamela, our found, founder, um, this big icon right here shows you that there is a digitized version of this um, publication available. So if you click on that, it will take you to our digital collections page where you can see the digitized version of this booklet and scroll through it. Um, so this kind of brings me to the, um, one of our other great resources, which is our digital collections um, at the Washington Library. I'll take you to the main page of that. Um, this is a great way to search um, and see all of the items that we have digitized here. Um, a lot of the George Washington manuscripts that we have are available. Um, through this, as well as a lot of the family papers, a lot of images 
um, of Mount Vernon and um, a significant amount of information about the MVLA as well. Um, and as I said, this is um, we use OCLC's Content DM um, system for this. And then the last thing I kind of wanted to show you is that we also have some material on Vimeo. We have some video. Um, we recently had some material digitized um, a lot of our film collections. And I wanted to show you how those are kind of linked to each other. Um, so if you go to our audiovisual collection, um, and then again down here to video, um, we had almost all of our film reels that are in the collection digitized recently within the last few years. And um, now those have all been organized and placed here. Um, so they're described in archive space, but then if you scroll down, you can click on um, specific ones and you can see here's the digitized um, version. And if you click on that, it gives you to, sends you to Vimeo, our Vimeo account. Um, and here's a good example of one of our videos that shows um, a visit of King George and Queen Elizabeth in 1939 to Mount Vernon. Um, so I think that there, there is another way to search on um, archive space. If you just want to look at digital material, um, you can see here. So anyway, um, that's just kind of an introduction to um, our special collections and archives that we have here at the Washington Library. So um, uh, that's it for me. I think I'll just hand it over to Lisa next. You know, as the final presentation, mine's going to be um, quick. I just wanted to give everybody an update about the American Presidency Project, which um, you can see here has a brand new look. Um, it's it's much more user-friendly. I know that this was um, a big project uh, for John Woolley and Gerhard Peters um, at the University of California, um, Santa Barbara. And um, you can see here um, all types of presidential documents that you can search. And um, the majority of this collection is post-FDR. And, you know, this is an amazing resource because students, if they wanted to do some text mining, could grab a document and put it into the JSTOR text analyzer or something like Voyant. Um, there's a big section on statistics, all right, with mapping and data visualization that I think librarians and students are going to find useful. Um, there is a media archive as well that can be searched and then a section of content by president um, so you know I encourage everybody to take a look at this new interface and now I'm gonna just go in um, to PowerPoint and just show you some of the new content um, that will be included are Donald Trump's tweets, uh, press pull reports, uh, 2020 campaign materials, and this final slide are some articles that discuss resources as they exist now um, for presidential studies as all of our presenters have told us, you know, websites, content are constantly being updated. Um, there's a list of um, research guides, and also Hein Online has a great new collection about the JFK assassination um, with, I think, over 600,000 um, records in there. And that's, that's all I have, and I'll hand it back to Linda. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. This was wonderful to um, see what your... Um, different institutions are doing. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, I guess one of my questions was, is there any um, big projects coming that you have in the works or things that you... I, I just wanted to, uh, to comment that um, the presidential or the secret White House tapes, which we also call the Presidential Recordings Project, uh, we are getting ready to kind of 
redo that part of the website in an effort to make it a little bit more user friendly than it is right now. So just kind of FYI, it won't happen, you know, before the new year, but just um, we're hoping to make that a little bit more, um, a little bit clearer to user kind of the combination of just the audio and then the transcripts in the audio a little bit easier for people to be able to navigate. So keep your eye out for that. And this is uh, Catherine. Um, I would just add um, special collections are um, our main project right now is just describing documents, which anyone who works in archives can understand. Um, our archives-based database um, just went public this year, so we're sort of working to um, get through the backlog and catch up on some things and sort of beef up those item-level descriptions um, to make them more accessible to people, um, especially adding um, subject-level subject um, access points um, for um, topics such as slavery, um, you know, Native Americans, the presidency, um, the farewell address, these sort of um, access points that people are often asking reference questions um, about. Could you talk about how people can access the physical collections or the process for doing that? Maybe that might be of interest for some. Um, sure. For the um, Fred W. Smith Library, um, we're open by appointment only. Um, we don't qualify researchers or make anybody um, submit any kind of um, like letters of recommendation and all of that. Um, if people just go to our website, there's a form um, or there's a general email that people can use. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday, um, 9 to 5. Um, you just have to make a research appointment to get you through the gate. Um, and then our um, reading room, both our general collection and our special collections materials are um, available. So if people are looking for specifically the um, Washington era manuscripts in the special collections, um, you can also feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, or um, reach out to Becca for the archives materials. And I got, I've been getting, some people are sending me private, que private questions actually. Uh, could Lisa talk a little bit more about what kind of statistics are included in that section of the site? Okay, so there is, um, you can look at election results by year. Um, I hope so we can you, see that. You got it? Okay, great. So you can look at election years, you can look at um, Breakdown by party going back to 1789, you know, uh, and then in the data archive, there is so much here. Um, I think this is great, again, for librarians, researchers, and students. Um, there's information about um, congressional relations, approval rating, right? And then we see we have approval ratings here from Eisenhower through Trump. So basically, you know, whatever your researchers might be looking for, it's pretty likely they're going to find something useful in here. We've got how many news conferences presidents participated in, executive branch growth, elections, obviously. There's some more data here. So there's, there's a lot here. Great, thank you. And yeah. um, let's see, Anna was saying, uh, no questions, but a giant thank you. This was an eye opener. Um, thank you for coming, Anna. Thank you for coming. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I, um, thank you, everybody.